use. Um, hi guys, welcome to DrupalCon. Um, hope you all of you had a good lunch and our session doesn't make you more feel sleepy. <laughs> so um, the, talk will, the talk over here would be mostly around the recent trends in web, how web has evolved, how HTML DOM structure it has evolved, how we have moved from static web to the dynamic web now. Uh, sorry. So yeah, uh, more around how web has evolved in the, in the initial phases. And then we'll be quickly talking about web components, which is uh, one of the leading edge technologies in today's world, which is helping the, helping the web evolve. And then we'll be talking about polymers, which is something like you know, jQuery for JavaScript. So polymer is something that is um, polymer for web components. So yeah, it it helps you deal with web components with a with really with an ease. Um, after this talk will be followed with a short demo, in which we will talk about how do you write your Polymer components, how do you actually create a web component, um, and then we also have a Drupal theme written in, written with Polymer, which we will quickly walk through the code and uh, show you a demo of uh, the the theme running live. So uh, this is Piyush. Uh, I work with QED42 as a technical architect. And here's my colleague, Saket. He works as the UI UX lead at QED42. Um, I'll hand over the mic to him to uh, take the discussion forward. Hey, guys. Uh, so we'll start with uh, a little bit of history, uh, like uh, how web has evolved from the ages of static pages to now big uh, web applications, so dynamic applications. So earlier uh, in 90s, we, uh, when initially the web started, it was static HTML pages, just not uh, more than few pages per application, per uh, website. But later on, uh, it, uh, we, we saw CGI servlets uh, coming into picture. And then, uh, so with new features, now Web 2.0 was evolved, uh, keeping in mind to uh, deliver all the new requirements of uh, new upcoming page uh, web. Now, and then later on, again, we came up with the uh, service-oriented front-end architectures like uh, MVC, MVVM, and all, uh, like uh, which we see in um, Angular, ADC. So today, uh, basically, web has evolved a lot uh, from small websites to a big, large uh, enterprise applications. And uh, similar, similarly, we have lot of lot many features uh, now compared to the old, uh, old when it started. So we have uh, more features uh, now. Website are uh, applications are more of a set of features and uh, like uh, login functionality or uh, a set of functionalities basically and to do each each of these functionality we have lot lot many options available with us uh, like uh, so basically uh, to do a particular thing in uh, web uh, we have a uh, few ways to do it people have different opinions over how to do it and uh, and I'll not say that uh, anybody is wrong or anybody is right but yeah then again we give this uh, uh, we have this uh, the uh, many uh, options in front of us when we start with our application so uh, I'm uh, I think you all might have uh, uh, witnessed this issue like uh, if we are, if we have to develop these features for my uh, application, what to use, which plugin to use, which framework to go with, so the uh, this kind of uh, dilemma uh, is there. Uh, I'll exemplify this uh, dilemma with an example, uh, like um, uh, this um, scientist uh, did an experiment over two set of people. One set of people were given uh, six jars of jam to taste and then buy, and then other set of uh, 
people were given uh, 24 uh, bottles of jar and to test and then uh, buy something out of that. Uh, and after all the testing and um, uh, it came out that people, uh, the group of the set of people uh, who were provided with the uh, option of only six jars of uh, jam uh, ended up buying, 30% uh, out of them ended up buying any of the jam. But uh, on contrary, uh, the other set of people who, who were given more choices, 24 jams of bottle, uh, they ended up, uh, only 3% of them ended up buying any jam. So you see, the, and there is this, uh, this is what we call as decision paralysis or choice paralysis. Uh, basically, uh, you have too many options in front of you and then you feel ki which one is better and which one is not better. So again, uh, that's a dilemma in, uh, for, uh, that's the, uh, the same dilemma we as a front end developer have with us. Uh, we have uh, many uh, frameworks uh, like uh, Angular, uh, if we see Google Trend, Angular, React, Ember, Backbone. So uh, these are the basically uh, major frameworks um, into last, if you see the trends of last few years. Uh, and I'll see, uh, you see if they all deal with uh, they all have uh, one common notion of, they all share this notion of components. And, but they do it differently. And also they don't work together. So uh, once you, uh, while developing an application or uh, starting your project, if you uh, choose a particular framework, a particular uh, uh, plugin, you have to stick with that uh, and because then the other one, uh, other ones will not play, uh, integrate with it. So that's it. They all share this notion of component, but they don't. Uh, they do not work together. They do it differently, uh, and it's not key, they are doing it uh, wrongly. But it's only that they are doing it differently. So we have this uh, dilemma: which one is right and which one is wrong? Which one will fit us? Which one will exactly fit our requirement? So. Uh, so con consider considering this dilemma, uh, so people from W3 uh, who basically control the specs of browsers, uh, they came up uh, with this discussion back there in 2010, Dimitri uh, started this mail uh, that uh, uh, we should have these features in the brow in browsers itself rather than relying on uh, any other frameworks like uh, features like data binding, features like uh, encapsulation and uh, like importing. So these these features uh, should be native to browser itself. So they came up with this uh, specification of uh, web components. Uh, basically, web, web component is the uh, specs wherein. Uh, it allows you to define your own custom tags, custom HTML tags, and uh, you have full control of your element, full control of your tag, uh, of its uh, HTML, of its uh, styling, of its scripts, and uh, it won't bloat and affect other components. Uh, so one major uh, plus point of using web comp components would be uh, like, you, uh, you as a, uh, if you are working on a particular feature of your uh, application, you have complete uh, freedom to choose whichever framework you want to uh, use uh, and use that framework, develop your feature and encapsulate it with the web component custom tag. And whenever you want to reuse that, uh, you can reuse it in, in your application. Uh, and Again, uh, if you ha if your website has few uh, few features, you can have those features um, wrapped with these custom elements and then uh, uh, use it. So one of the features can be uh, developed through React. One other could be through other frameworks, and then you can uh, basically your application will have multiple uh, this, and you don't have then again uh, this. Uh, 
you will not end up uh, in this dilemma that what to use, what not to use. Means you can use and then again reuse it, use the same functionality later on. So basically, web components come with these four specs: custom, custom elements, HTML templates, shadow DOM, and HTML imports. So all these four uh, combinedly help you to uh, define your uh, own custom uh, element. Uh, which you can reuse, which you can share with uh, other people, uh, and even uh, you can just like in Drupal, we have modules. Uh, will uh, in for uh, front end uh, for in browser world, uh, will have these custom elements which you can share. So just uh, like we have, uh, so the concept of custom element is not uh, old and uh, is not. Uh, New is it's rather old. Uh, if you if you look uh, look uh, like you have this select element, so you have uh, the only thing is that now you have as a web developer you have the power uh, to develop that elements. Not uh, you don't have to then rely on the browsers to uh, expose this uh, custom element as a feature and then uh, once that comes into a browser as a feature then you will have that power to use that feature. Like uh, when, we, when we were shifting from HTML4 to HTML5, uh, all of these semantic HTML templates, uh, semantic HTML tags like uh, header, footer, article. So we had to wait for HTML5 to come in, uh, all the browsers to support it. Then uh, then we could actually use those elements into our, into our application. But uh, with custom elements, we don't have to wait for the browsers to um, actually ship this functionality. Uh, it's on us to develop this functionality and ship, uh, basically con contribute to the community and then uh, people will use it. Uh, I guess, uh, for example, uh, like in uh, this, uh, uh, traditionally, uh, if you have to use a text box, you'll use uh, you'll have a text uh, input box and then uh, if you have to again uh, make some changes to add in icons you'll uh so how many of you guys attended the Dries keynote um so did you see that example wherein Dries showed that uh, what do we mean by componentizing the componenting componentizing drupal so he showed an example wherein he showed a text box and then this text box was plugged in with a search bar, right? Did you guys remember that? So it's the same example. So uh, let's say we have a text box. You would use an input type is equal to text and you, your browser would render it. But in case you have a text box with a search icon, uh, you will need to uh, wrap this thing into, a, into another wrapper div and then place an input type text and input type button, both of them into the single wrapper and add some more styles, right? What web component would allow you to do is, it would allow you to define a different tag, altogether a different tag, which could take in the, at, which could take in the, uh, take in arguments as a parameter. So for example, in the right side, but in the red section, you see we have defined a, a custom web component called search text box. Okay. So all you need to do is, you need to type in this text into your HTML add this to your HTML and it would render a search a text box with a search icon. So you see the power it brings in with itself. You don't need to write, uh, you don't need to write that huge, uh, that huge chunk of HTML. Uh, probably this example is really small, but yeah, in cases you would have huge, huge HTML uh, rendering a small block on your web page. You could uh, encapsulate this entire thing into a single tag and reuse it across websites. So you develop it once and reuse it multiple times. Another advantage is you could open source it out and uh, other people could use it. So Polymer is doing the same thing. Uh, Polymer has its own library of uh, web components and there's another custom elements.io website wherein people are out so, uh, open sourcing out the uh, components that they built for their applications. So basically this web components uh, specs are basically the low level API uh, and uh, there comes in the polymer because uh, 
so it's it's like uh, similar to JavaScript, uh, and uh, so what we uh, what relations we have with uh, JavaScript to jQuery similar is the relation with the po uh, web components to Polymer. So basically, Polymer is a uh, sugaring layer above uh, web component specs, and they allow you to define your own custom elements in a much easier and more intuitive way. And then uh, you have more um, helper functions to do it more easily, more uh, and whatever uh, is there missing uh, in web components that features are brought in by Polymer into the web components world. Um, so basically, if you uh, look for the relationship as jQuery is to JavaScript, similar is Polymer is to uh, web components. So and uh, many a times uh, I've heard that pe people are uh, confusing with this uh, fact that uh, Polymer is an another framework. But no, uh, actually uh, Polymer is a. a a way to uh, allow you to develop your own uh, fra framework or it allows you to uh, use the existing framework but with more efficiently the fe but with the features which are uh, native to the browsers let let it be native to the browser itself basically uh, it's a layer above uh, so we have this uh, browser web plat uh, platform and then uh, this polymer layer sits uh, just above that and then you have this existing layer uh, you, uh, using those existing frameworks you can uh, develop your own web applications. So and uh, on 29th May 2015 I guess uh, uh, this uh, polymer 1.0 was released and from uh, there um, lot many pages have been developed uh, over the internet and uh, it is production ready uh, basically uh, people are using it uh, the uh, using these polymer elements for the custom elements into their uh, own web application uh, but if you see the stats uh, uh, by the end of 2015 um, we had around 1.3 million um, pages on web which were using polymer uh, if you might uh, remember even uh, github uses polymer if you remember the date date time stamp uh, date time tag uh, element in uh, side of beside your repository that's a polymer element so and uh, even uh, google is using for almost uh, all of its uh, applications like Play music, Google Maps, uh, they are all built on uh, polymers. So, so I think uh, the, there is no that, uh, there's not um, this question that it's still new and we have that browser support and all. Uh, I'll talk about the browser support as well, but for the browsers which uh, don't have uh, native support, we have uh, polyfills available, which is, uh, uh, which allows almost all. Uh, uh, all, all modern browsers to work with the polymers. So this, so till now we were talking about uh, the all theory and all uh, what polymer could do and what. So let's uh, start with creating an element. Let's see how to create an element with polymer, and uh, so uh, we'll explore how uh, what all features we have with uh, with polymer we have available. So. Uh, so for this talk, I have, uh, I'll take this as an example to uh, create. Uh, so think of, uh, so this is the element which we are going to uh, develop. Uh, this uh, green bar you see, uh, it's, it's a sort of small alert banner on your uh, website. Uh, um, you can relate it with your Drupal set messages in Drupal. Uh, so the success messages which come after you save a node, you do an operation on your website and you see a success message appearing. So it's the same uh, success message probably. Yeah. So uh, and to use it, basically you don't have to do anything. Uh, if you, uh, when you have to use any uh, in your browser, you just have to include this HTML uh, tag, site message, and then uh, it will uh, show the message which you want to show. 
obviously we'll make it configurable we will make make it dynamic but start uh, first start we'll uh, start with the basic um, so uh, to start uh, first uh, the our starting point would be site message.html which will hold the definition of our um, element and we, uh, one thing we have to take care here is that the name of the file site message.html should be exactly same as the name of our element tag so and we place all our uh, code in uh, the code to hold the definition of our uh, polymer element inside site message.html um, so uh, I'll start with the first uh, line that is uh, import first thing which we do is to import all the de dependencies uh, which we have for uh, our element uh, so for this example uh, this is a very uh, simple example so uh, we don't have any uh, any dependency other than this polymer HTML so basically uh, this uh, this will bring in the polymer uh, prototype definitions uh, to our site message.html and uh, and if we have dependency of uh, any other element so for example our uh, element is depending on any other element uh, to do something or to get the data uh, we can include it here with the import uh, import uh, uh, link tag with import rel rel import then the second part is uh, DOM module which so basically this holds the uh, markup and then uh, this holds the uh, definition of our element and with the name of our element as an ID passed pass to it then uh, the local DOM so uh, yeah uh, so basically this uh, this template tag holds the markup uh, for our uh, element so uh, when we uh, when we use our element into the uh, into our application whenever we have to use it so the markup inside this template tag uh, is rendered there so basically uh, uh, here when we define it it's uh, inert tag uh, inert uh, html and when we render it into our browser there where it uh, actually gets inserted into the HTML DOM and then uh, then we call this uh, polymer uh, prototype object to basically define the uh, define the element so so actually uh, so um, I was telling you that template this template holds the definition of your uh, uh, holds your markup, your style, your scripts. So, yeah, uh, so this is how, uh, in template we have mentioned the style and uh, we have the markup, like uh, class allow it and we pass in some text to display. And uh, this is how it is displayed once used in, a, uh, in our uh, HTML. Uh, so when, uh, so when we, um, and this is how we use it in our index.html we call that tag uh, so once we define these um, uh, style and then uh, markup when we call it in index.html uh, this is shown uh, this way but till now uh, this is so we uh, we have now created a very basic very uh, uh, basic html tag which we can use it uh, whenever we have to use in uh, our HTML just we need to print site as uh, site message tag and then uh, we have that uh, HTML level but uh, the problem with uh, this uh, tag is now is that uh, we are hard coding uh, the text which we are passing it uh, or the markup is uh, hard coded even uh, and uh, even it is not configurable so this is not uh, what you will expect out of a site message you will you want it to be more configurable uh, anyone uh, who is using your el uh, element uh, could have his uh, its own uh, his own text pass into the element so uh, let's make it configurable but before this i'll uh, i'll talk about a uh, concept of shadow dom and light dom so whenever we uh, uh, 
so the main DOM is there, that, it, that HTML DOM. And whenever we insert a other uh, DOM, uh, other element, uh, the custom element inside it, it brings in a shadow DOM with it. And this shadow DOM is not uh, active until unless uh, this um, this element is called and this uh, this uh, this element is actually in use. And uh, so it remains in uh, it, that shadow DOM remains inside your DOM. Uh, inert, but uh, uh, doing nothing, just like a command. But once it is in use, uh, you can relate it to Angular's uh, markup when you pass it with uh, ng if, and uh, that if is uh, that if condition is not satisfied, uh, so your markup is still there, but uh, you don't. Uh, it's basically inert there. So you can relate shadow DOM with that. And uh, then there is this light DOM. Uh, so whenever a user will use your tag, it will, uh, it will have his, uh, he will have his own uh, HTML markup uh, residing inside your uh, HTML tags. Like uh, uh, example, there's this span and P tags inside of div. So, so devs <coughs> own markup would be uh, devs and then devs class and all. But uh, inside uh, inside that p and span tags would be their uh, light DOM. Uh, it will be more clear when I show you this. Uh, and uh, again, yeah, uh, and something inside your light DOM is accessible into your shadow DOM through this content tag. Uh, if you can, if you see this uh, content tag, and uh, this is in, in index.html, the, uh, here the light DOM would be the span inside your site message, and the shadow DOM would be the content uh, pass in here with the class alert. So this div and the so this is the shadow DOM and uh, here this is the light DOM. So whenever you have to use uh, something, uh, whenever you have to bring in uh, light DOM into a shadow DOM or content from light DOM to your shadow DOM, which you can uh, then uh, activate, you pass in with the, this content tag and select, at, uh, select attribute. You pass in uh, the class which you uh, have to uh, bring into this uh, content tag and it will be rendered. So actually uh, actual uh, rendered HTML would be uh, div with a class alert and inside that there would be uh, the success your uh, first component text would be appearing. Are you getting me? Uh, so, so once we do this uh, now now we have a configurable uh, tag we, uh, with us. Like uh, now we can. Uh, so whenever uh, so the user who is using your tag can easily pass in uh, the HTML like uh, class message and your the text which can be called into your uh, and then uh, so the text which is appearing here such as your first component is is actually configurable through uh, the tag. But uh, this is not it. We also have to make it configurable. Uh, uh, configurable, I mean, uh, this is uh, allowed manner. So you want it uh, to, you want to show it to you user, uh, to your user only when there is an, there is something, some activity uh, and all. Uh, like a message on form submission or something. You want to you you will want to use this tag as that, so uh, so we'll make it more configurable. So for that, uh, for that we pass in configuration through the uh, properties attribute of uh, polymer uh, prototype of uh, polymer prototype object. So basically, uh, so whatever we define in these properties, uh, this will be this will act as a attribute to your element 
when it is uh, actually rendered in uh, rendered in your uh, HTML. Uh, so uh, for for here, uh, I've selected shown as a property for my element, uh, which of which the type uh, type of which is boolean. Uh, the default value which I am passing is false, and I've made this. Uh, property uh, to be notifiable uh, i mean uh, whenever there is this uh, whenever the update uh, there is this update in uh, this property your element will be notified uh, basically uh, it will be shown uh, the it will be reflected into that that element so basically it's a two way binding so this is uh, how you use uh, the this is the value which we pass in here and then this this value is uh, bind, binded to this property hidden uh, and which is sort of state of that property uh, that element so uh, so uh, if you see uh, the result uh, so even though uh, in our index.html we have a site message and with class message even uh, even though it is there it is present in the HTML uh, we don't see it uh, it uh, it will only be in it, it's basically inert and it will only be shown when uh, I have this shown property to be true so whenever I pass in shown here the value is updated to be true initially it was false uh, by default it was false whenever I pass it pass this uh, attribute uh, as an HTML attribute, so that will be shown, and you have your element appearing there. So we can trigger it, uh, trigger it through uh, backend of JavaScript. Whenever there is this uh, form submission, we can uh, turn this attribute to true. Uh, so uh, this was the uh, so basically uh, we uh, dealt with very basic. HTML, uh, custom HTML tag, but we can think of uh, our complete application as a set of these uh, small features. Like you will have just one um, login button or login uh, login tag, which will bring login functionality to your um, uh, website. Uh, so polymers. Uh, Polymer team has already uh, developed very uh, like very useful elements like uh, Iron Ajax. So Iron Ajax is an element wherein uh, you pull in uh, all your uh, you pass in uh, the race data to uh, this uh, Iron Ajax, and then uh, that data is available to uh, to you in your uh, HTML. Uh, we can think of uh, these uh, so uh, and we can always go and reuse those uh, polymer elements. Similarly, if we want to have a material design to uh, and material design with all material animation in them, so polymer team has already developed this uh, uh, paper uh, paper elements uh, which showcase their uh, material design. Uh, so, if we uh, have to use these material design, uh, we just need to include those uh, those tags, those paper elements into our uh, application, and then uh, we are good to go. So, we can think of these elements as a building blocks for a better web, and which can be reused. We can basically uh, it would be like modularizing your complete web, componentizing your web. So. Uh, and uh, it would be so adding a new feature inside is just like pre existing element available, um, uh, which we can get it from custom element.io or elements polymer dot project uh, uh, elements polymer project dot r, uh, where uh, people already people are already developing these custom elements and uh, we can reuse them. Even if we uh, if we feel that something is missing, we can. Uh, Develop these uh, elements, and we can contribute to the mm, community. So, yeah, yeah. So these uh, till now we were uh, talking just about uh, 
front end uh, uh, polymer web components. Uh, now we will get into how we can use these uh, this feature into our Drupal uh, through our Drupal theme. So this is not only uh, way to uh, alter our front end of Drupal. We can also uh, get into uh, we can use these elements into our modules. Uh, just we need to go more deep into the render pipeline and then uh, enable uh, our module to use uh, these components and i'm sure uh, we'll need to make some uh, some changes to our render pip pipeline in drupal as well to uh, use these uh, this uh, polymer or web components more efficiently uh, so uh, so uh, here we'll be talking about uh, how to use Polymer in our Drupal theme. Uh, to so basically uh, in our Drupal theme, uh, first thing I'll do is I'll have a direct have a directory to hold this element definition which I'll create or um, which are uh, definition. So like here I have an elements uh, directory and in in this I have block blog.html, site message.html, and we can have many more uh, elements which we want to use in. And then uh, uh, we can uh, pull in the, we can pull in contributed custom elements uh, through bow.json, uh, like paper elements, iron elements, uh, they are all available in for, uh, from Bower. And that will go into our Bower component, uh, Bower components, and so uh, in in our elements folder we have that uh, HTML elements dot HTML wherein we uh, import all these elements which we we have to use, uh, and uh, like uh, in Iron elements I'm uh, using Iron selector, Iron pages. Uh, and then in paper elements to bring in material design to my theme, uh, I'm uh, using uh, paper button, paper card, paper toolbar. So these uh, and then uh, I have also included uh, our site message dot html which we uh, defined just now uh, to uh, to our theme. And then uh, once we bring in all these uh, imports to this html dot uh, elements dot html. Uh, now we have to make our HTML, basically our uh, Drupal theme, aware of this uh, Polymer. So for that we, uh, so so for that we include uh, this web components like dot js. Basically, this is a set of polyfills uh, uh, from uh, for web components uh, or for the specification for the browsers which are not self supporting. Uh, polymer uh, to support these uh, features and uh, we'll include this uh, this in our uh, in the head of our um, ht, uh, html dot html dot twig file and uh, we'll include uh, htm, uh, elements dot html uh, which holds all the elements definition for us and uh, on including these two files now our theme is uh, aware of uh, all the polymer elements for polymer tags. Uh, so now we can use it in our uh, page DPL or, or all our template files. Mm. And then, uh, so this is how uh, this is how we add it. And then, uh, so I'll uh, show you the. So this is the theme, uh, which we, so which which I created. Uh, this is the site which is using that poly theme, which I created using Polymer. So it has uh, paper card, uh, pap uh, paper drawer, paper header panel, paper drawer, and so uh, you can see uh, this. Uh, even it's responsive, and uh, you have this um, drawer coming to hold menu menu region and then uh, your content region is in here i'll show this in uh, how i have defined the 
So before we look at the at how we did this in Polymer, uh, can anyone talk about uh, how difficult is it to integrate a drawer? I mean, how much of effort would it take to integrate a drawer in a Drupal website or in any website, basically? Anyone? Is it like 10 lines of HTML code and a couple of JavaScript libraries, a couple of CSS files, something of that sort, right? But, uh, so this is my uh, page HTML tweak. Basically, uh, this is the paper drawer panel and in here I'm uh, passing uh, the region, basically uh, page header region and uh, primary me menu region and then uh, then then this is the main uh, main header panel oh. is it okay now yeah so uh, so basically uh, this was my uh, paper drawer panel wherein uh, i'm passing uh, uh, a drawer and then there is so paper drawer panel has two components a drawer and a uh, main uh, main content region and the main content region will hold all our uh, content regions like uh, highlight uh, messages uh, content uh, content region and uh, this drawer uh, here holds the primary menu and header basically uh, the logo and branding and uh, this is there and and I don't, I didn't, did not have to uh, do any uh, any CSS or JavaScript to uh, basically uh, bring in this uh, mobile uh, drawer, and this is completely responsive and ha works fine with uh, my uh, works fine on uh, web and mobile. Similarly, uh, I had used this uh, paper. If I go to spot, you're not online. Okay. Try going to sessions. Um. So uh, this is my local. Sorry. Uh, internet was not working. Uh. So here. Uh. Even I have used paper card, and to define this, uh, uh, so this is a simple view, and I, uh, in my view, I had just uh, to define. I just define this paper card, and with a, uh, I pass the heading, uh, the title as a heading, and image as a field, uh, image content, and. Uh, body body as a card content and so I, I did not have to do any of CSS for this and uh, this brings in completely so basically uh, the old uh, uh, polymer team has already defined this uh, paper card and which has all these effects of uh, uh, card effects so so basically this is uh, uh, how we can use in our theme uh, this polymer element and there are uh, like n number of elements available out there which you can use and uh, which uh, you like uh, like a date picker uh, uh, calendar date, date picker or uh, I was talking about iron ajax element uh, uh, there are like uh, if you if you ha if you want to have this power of service focus as well, uh, there is this uh, platinum uh, elements, uh, platinum SW, uh, which allows you to have service focus uh, functionality in your theme. Uh, that will uh, allow you to cache in stuffs. Uh, so uh, so basically, uh, this is quite uh, powerful, and uh, we can. Uh, ha this and bring this brings in uh, many uh, aspects. This gives us more freedom to develop uh, our own element and uh, uh, more freedom over the markup uh, of our um, theme and uh, 
this is how you, you, you can use Polymer in your Drupal theme. Uh, so now, uh, so one last thing is that uh, we are uh, using, uh, so earlier back in HTML, uh, 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 elements.html, elements.html, we define all these uh, elements in here. So one thing which we have to take care is that uh, these elements, uh, so this will bring an overhead to your browser that uh, for each elements, your, uh, the browser has to, for each page request, browser has to go make these many uh, network, re network requests. And so overall, uh, your, uh, browser will have uh, the network will have more uh, more of the things to bring in more of the static uh, mm, network request to do. So what we do is uh, when we uh, once the development is done and we are ready for uh, production. Uh, so what we do is we use a tool called Vulcanize for. Uh, uh, for merging these all, all these L, uh, imports to a single file so that only uh, we have to only import a particular single file uh, to uh, when uh, rendering it so uh, what vulcanize does is it will bring on, bring in all these element definitions uh, from elements.html and it will uh, merge them all, uh, all its CSS, all its JavaScript, all its um, HTML into a part in, into a single file. Uh, we can name it as elements dot vulcanize dot HTML, and uh, we uh, we pass in uh, that file into into our um, head tag, uh, wherein we were passing elements dot HTML. So basically, uh, it's like. I'll show you the gulp task which I wrote. So this is a vulcanized task, uh, uh, gulp task to vulcanize, uh, wherein I'm uh, taking the source uh, source to be uh, elements dot vulcanized uh, el elements dot html and then passing it uh, uh, passing it the vulcanized uh, actually the vulcanized file to this uh, elements.vulcanize.html. So now once uh, uh, I'm done, uh, once so this is my uh, elements.html and once I run So uh, we are in poly theme and I'll run. Okay. 
guess there is I will turn it like this So what I, uh, actually this vulcanize will do is it will give me uh, elements dot vulcanized uh, dot html which has all which uh, it, it it will have all the element definition which I have included into my uh, theme and uh, so only this will be included and uh, so basically uh, we don't have to then uh, do th those many uh, HTML requests for that because if we if we are just loading this elements dot HTML uh, in our production site this will have uh, too many HTML requests and then uh, this is not desirable this will make your site very slow uh, and ap uh, apparently uh, elements dot vulcanized dot HTML will uh, will be fine enough so. Uh, this is this is one task uh, in our gulp uh, for our gulp integration uh, when we talk about uh, browser support with polyfills polymer works in in these browsers like uh, d uh, all these specs template html imports custom elements shadow dom is is supported in chrome firefox i10 plus uh, safari chrome and uh, chrome android and then uh, safari ios so I think uh, this I guess covers almost all all browsers which we generally uh, work on. I don't think uh, now we have any one even Drupal 8 does not support i9, i10, i8. So I guess we are good with this. Mm. And uh, but uh, if you want to uh, know more about native browser support, uh, there's this can I use dot com uh, which tells us ki, uh, whether this bra this uh, web component uh, feature is there in the browser natively or not uh, almost uh, all modern browsers have it uh, and chrome uh, chrome does it uh, chrome has all uh, features for that um, if you want to look for the resources uh, uh, so the site which i just uh, showed which has this uh, polytheme uh, nola.qd42.net and the code base is hosted on uh, github.com slash qd42 slash nola underscore dcp16 and uh, so if you want to know more about polymer uh, uh, this polymerproject.org webcomponents.org uh, these have good resources to uh, get you started uh, and if you like uh, video, so this poly polycast by Rob Dodson is a good way to start with polymers. Uh, so I guess that's it. Um, any questions, guys? Time for questions. Oh, no questions? <laughs> um, Thank you for listening to us patiently. Patiently, um, please evaluate our session at the URL given over there. We would love to re read your comments. Thank you.